When working with regression, one of the questions that arises is, how can I be sure that my relationship between the two variables is linear? And the answer to that is actually more complicated than it might for at first appear. There's no one test to be 100% sure that a linear relation exists. There are a lot of things that we look at and consider. So the first three things we talk about in this chapter, and then the rest of it, honestly, is either chapter 14 or on entire other course. Usually a STATS 2 course has a great deal of regression and scatter plots and residual analysis in it because, um, believe it or not, but bi bivariate data and scatter plots can actually get extremely complicated. So looking at our data set, we've looked at scatter plots, right? Whether to just to gauge whether it's linear just by visually checking the scatter plot. Does it look linear? Then we've looked at both R and R squared. R we learned was the correlation coefficient from section 4.1. R squared is that R value squared, which is called the coefficient of determination. And we considered that earlier in this section. And now we want to consider residual plots. Now residual plot is, well, there are actually many, many residual plots. We're going to consider this particular type, which is a graph that shows the residuals on the y-axis and the explanatory variable on the x-axis. We are not going to be doing these by hand. We will just analyze graphs that are pre-drawn for us by the computer. So here we have the free reduced lunch data set with the math passing rates. And I've highlighted a few of the dots so you can kind of see them in different colors. So I have a blue dot up here and then a green dot, a red dot, and an orange dot. I could have colored them all different colors, but I just want to get you a sense of this. So this is the same data set we saw earlier. And now we want to consider a residual plot. Now remember a residual is the distance between a point and the line. So if I measure that straight vertical distance and then I want to make a plot of that distance. So this point is about 12 below the line and that's why when you graph it down here that dot is about 12 below the line. This orange dot over here is about 1.26 below the line up here which is why we graph it at 1.26 down here. This green dot is seven above the line. So that's why right here, seven above the line. So that's why we graph it at seven above. So it's sort of like you're taking your entire line and tilting it so it's horizontal. And then all you graph is the distances from that line. So all these distances that these points had, you graph them here. So points that are above the line have positive values, points that are below the line that have negative values. And there you go. Now, how do we look at a graph like this? Since we're not going to be making these by hand, what are we looking for? If the points in that residual plot are randomly dispersed around the horizontal axis, then a linear regression model was appropriate for the data set. In other words, you want no non-random pattern. It's kind of bad English. How about this? You want a random pattern. Want a random pattern and you want no horn shape to it, right? I guess I got rid of the want. So you, well, I'm going to leave it in there. You want a random pattern and you want there to be no horn shape, right? No cone or, um, or cone shape, right? If you see a horn shape or a cone shape, that's no good to you. You want a random pattern. Here, let me put it this way. We do not want a non-random pattern. We do not want a horn shape or a cone shape. There, that'll, that'll be a better way to say it. Okay, Those are the things we want. So we want a random pattern. We do not want a non-random pattern. We do not want a horn shape. If the linear model is not appropriate, i.e. if there was a pattern or a horn shape in the residual plot, then the slope, the intercept, the correlation coefficient, all of it, it's all worthless. It doesn't mean anything. So the residual plot kind of trumps all the earlier things we've learned. So if the residual plot is bad, that means that you shouldn't be doing all the things that we were doing earlier in this chapter at all. All right, so let's consider some residual plots. We have the regression models were found for data sets and their respective residual plots are drawn below. For which data sets were linear models appropriate and not appropriate? So these are residual plots. So we have plot one, two, three, and four. What you want is you want a random pattern. You do not want 
a non-random pattern, you do not want a horn shape. Right? Now, if you're if that's the case and you want things to look kind of random, you want them to look like somebody threw the dots up on the screen, then this is the one that's linear. So linear model appropriate because the residual plot is all random dots, right? There's no pattern going on there at all. And that's what we want, no pattern. Hold on, I'm sorry, I'm having some issues with my, there we are. All right, now what about number four? I'm, I know I'm skipping one and two, but I'll come back to them. Now, number four, you can see a very clear pattern to this, a non-random pattern. We do not want that. So this is not a linear model. Oops. Residual plot shows a definite pattern, right? And that is not what we want. It seems kind of counterintuitive, but we want it to look like somebody threw the points up there randomly. Right? We want random dots. That's good. Right? Random dots good, patterns bad. Right? <laughs> Sounds terribly English. All right. All right, what about here for A and for, for, for residual plot one and residual plot two? Well, you can see this has a distinctive pattern. It starts low, goes up, and goes back down. Right? So again, this is not a linear model because it shows a def definite pattern. It shows kind of a U-shaped pattern, right? And that's a, usually a very problematic pattern to see. That usually means that there's an exponential curve but lying behind our data set. And for residual plot two, that one is also not a linear model, not because it shows a pattern, but because it shows a cone shape. Can you see the cone kind of here? I'll draw it for you. So you can kind of see it starts like this and then goes out from there. So it's getting wider and wider and wider as we go. That's a cone shape. That is not a linear model appropriate. So again, if you see a pattern, no good. If you see a cone shape, no good. If you see like somebody threw up all the points all over the place, that's good. I know it seems kind of strange, but that's a good thing. You want it to look random. You do not want it to look like it has a pattern or a cone. All right, now that we know that, Let's look at this problem here. Actually, I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to make this last problem because it's a review problem for the entire chapter. I'm going to make it its own video because it really encompasses all three, all the sections. So I'll be see you back here for the last video.